Matt, in one sentence, what is the pirate's dilemma? So the pirate's dilemma is uh, the problem of what we do about digital information and content spilling out everywhere without anybody being able to control it. So what have we learned from pirates thus far? What's our biggest lesson? I think the thing that we can really learn from piracy is that often it's a market signal, often it's a sign of market failure, it's a sign that something's not going quite right in the system or the marketplace that you operate in. And if pirates are doing something that your consumers really get behind, then fighting piracy isn't always the best strategy. Sometimes it's better to look at what those pirates are doing, figure out where the value is and copy them. So like you said, LimeWire, for instance, it's on one in three computers. Mm -hmm. What happens when society gets behind pirates? Well, the music industry is, is the perfect example. It was really the canary in the coal mine for what's happening with, uh, with digital. So if you look at something like LimeWire, if you, can you imagine if, if someone like Sony BMG or EMI, if they'd bought LimeWire in 1999 or bought Napster, Napster, they would have been where iTunes is today. Steve Jobs once said that the way to beat pirates is, is to compete with them. And that's exactly what he did with iTunes, and that's why Apple was able to make this really aggressive move into the music business. So in the music industry, competing with it and not fighting with it proved to be the best answer. Absolutely. I mean, if you look at where digital's gone in terms of music, all the businesses that are doing really well are the businesses that have worked out new ways to engage with audiences and to find customers and to, and to connect with them and, and earn money in other places rather than just selling them plastic discs. So other than iTunes and Apple's, uh, or Apple, what has been the most effective corporate response? So the most effective corporate response, and you, you see this everywhere, is people looking at what pirates do, looking at the value, and then, and then doing it themselves. There's examples everywhere from Nike looking at sneaker pirates and people copying their designs, mm -hmm. and then looking at the cool things in those designs and coming out with better designs. There's examples in the pharmaceutical business of big, big companies watching where people are pirating their drugs, then going into those markets and establishing new markets and, and giving away the drugs sometimes, sometimes selling them at much lower prices. Often pirates are, are, fi are new pioneers, they're kind of finding new markets or, or new things that people kind of inside the box of the marketplace can't mm -hmm. often see. Now you offered your book for free on your website, you also have it mm -hmm. on Amazon. Has offering it for free open up more opportunity for you? Absolutely. Um, so I offer it under a pay what you want model on my website. About 10 to 15 percent of the people uh, pay five dollars or more for a copy of that book. It didn't cannibalize uh, digital book sales, physical book sales at all. It actually caused a spike in physical book sales because of all the press we got. Mm -hmm. uh, and in terms of all the other opportunities in terms of um, speaking at conferences or consulting or all the opportunities that Business books are, are really about, they're really giant business cards. A lot of business book authors, myself included, make a lot more money from, right. from all the things they do other than selling books. So do you think that the freeware is the answer for the entrepreneur or the artist that's just getting started? I don't think it's the right answer for everybody. If you look at the music industry again, there isn't one business model that fits every single artist. Mm -hmm. Justin Timberlake has 150 revenue streams now. That works for him, it might not work for another band on the same label as him, let alone a different label. The problem we're dealing with online with digital is, is really a problem of complexity and us not understanding how you make all these new smaller revenue streams work together rather than one big revenue stream, which may be sort of the case in the industry right. you were in before. But we're starting to get it, but the, the answer is that there's re it's really about you and what you do, where your customers are, and how you can create a really unique business model. So one last question in terms of films. How do you think they're going to solve the problem of piracy? So it, it's definitely a big or problem. Or compete with it. Right. So uh, there's, there's kind of two things going on. One is the box office, which has never been stronger. I don't think that's going to change until we invent a better way to go on a first date with someone and spend two hours in the dark. <laughs> right. I think Hollywood's going to be fine. In terms of the shift from DVD to digital formats, mm -hmm. I don't think Blu-ray or any other physical format is going to be the answer because customers have already moved on. Uh, the answer really for them, I think, is coming up with, because there's so many ways to pirate a film, it's really about giving consumers as many ways, in fact, more ways, to get to something consume. legitimately. Yeah.